Hello friends, I'm Kayla and you're watching my cozy mystery series. It's episode four. About a year ago, I delved into the idea of cozy mystery, started to explore lighter, fun things. And I have definitely leaned towards the more just like light, silly, fun, satirical, as opposed to actual like mass market cozy mysteries from the 15 to 20 that I've read so far, but I'm still gonna call this my cozy mystery series. I hope that's okay with you. And today is the long awaited sequel episode where I'm taking some of my favorites that have sequels and I'm reading them. There's five. First up, I'll be reading Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun by El Casamano. This is the third book in the Finley Donovan series. The first one, Finley Donovan is killing it. The second was Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead. This I gave a five, this I gave a four. It kicks off with a recently divorced mother of two and she gets caught up in a murder for hire scheme. She's an author, she's writing a book. Someone overhears her talking about killing a character, thinks it's real and tries to hire her to kill her husband. This is probably more a cozy thriller if I had to categorize it because Finley just gets caught up in all of these different scenarios. It's wild and fun. I'm going to keep this video as spoiler free as I can. With lighter fun mysteries, typically like the main character, the love interests, and any best friends are going to remain the entire series. Like they're not going to die. So talking about all the key players, I don't think would be much of a spoiler, but the actual mystery I will like keep to myself because it's continuing on three books deep. Next up, same color cover, is Four Aunties and a Wedding by Jesse Q. Satanto. This is the sequel to Dial A for Aunties, which I gave a five star. It's again more like thriller and romance than a mystery, but she kills her blind date and then her entire family is spending the book like hiding the body. And now in this one, the main character is getting married and I think the family she's marrying into, they might actually be killers and I don't really know the plot from there. Third up is A Perilous Undertaking by Deanna Rayborn. This is the second book in the Veronica Speedwell mystery series. This is a historical Victorian. Uh, the first book is A Curious Beginning. I gave it four and a half stars, but I think it could be a five when I go back and reread it after getting deeper into the series. Veronica is an orphan. There's somebody trying to kill her and this man saves her and then he gets killed. And so she gets put into the care of this man named Stoker. They don't really like each other, but they have to kind of fake that they're in a relationship. And I think in each book, there's a different kind of mystery to be solved. So this just set a bunch of things up. And then in this one, there's some type of mystery involving art and somebody who's died or somebody who wants somebody dead or something like that. I don't read the synopsis of books enough to know what they're about, but once I know, I'll let you know. Number four, I don't actually have, um, but it's the sequel to Magic Lies and Deadly Pies by Misha Pop. It's called A Good Day to Pie. I'm gonna grab the audiobook because I don't think there's any reason for a hardcover cozy mystery to be $38. I just haven't seen anybody talk about it yet to convince me that I need to buy it. So I'm gonna start the audiobook. Maybe if I love it, I will pick myself up a coffee. As the title suggests, there is a little bit of magic. So this is kind of outside of the typical cozy mystery. Uh, this woman bakes pies, she has a business and the pies can kill people. It's not a super murdery story, but it does have that element of revenge and a main character who is discussing the morality of what she's doing. And I questioned if the rest of the series was gonna be the same plot because she is challenging her own motivations. And I just didn't think that the next book would be about just murdering someone else and then having the same thoughts. So it seems like it is going in a different direction because there she's entering a competition and she is being hired to bake a pie that's going to kill one of the judges. But before she can even decide if she wants to, he dies anyway. So now she's solving the mystery of who was out to get him to begin with. Uh, in this one, the mystery is like, who is blackmailing her and knows about her business. And lastly, probably the one that actually fits best into the cozy mystery category or the only one that fits there, a Game of Cones by Abby Collette. The first one was A Deadly Inside Scoop, which is about a girl named Bronwyn and she is taking over her family's ice cream shop business and wants it to be successful. And then she finds a man dead and he maybe had some history with the family. So one of her family members is gonna be implicated unless she solves the crime. That's the typical setup for a cozy mystery. In this one, the same thing is happening. Somebody has died, but this time it's her best friend who's being implicated. People are dropping dead. It's up to Bronwyn to solve all the mysteries. I'm super excited to get into all of these. So I will check in with you once I start one. Last time I was filming in the vehicle, my steering wheel was in focus and not my face. And I can't tell with how bright the screen of this camera is if I'm in focus or not. So I hope I am. I'm starting with Finley Donovan jumps the gun naturally because the live show is in three days. I just had an early morning appointment and as I was waiting, so I was there a little bit early, I got the first 
three chapters in. And the scene I ended on involved um, Finley jumping out from behind a hedge. And like, that's the cover that I designed for this book was her behind a hedge. And I just think that that's interesting. Something I loved with the second book and something I'm continuing to love in this book is that it references itself. So Finley is writing a book and it is inspired by her own situation. So her being a mom and then getting caught up in this situation and people trying to hire her to kill people. And so the book is very much reflecting her real life consistently. And her agent is telling her all the things that like her readers wish were in her books more. And like, hey, can you put the cop in it more, the love interest, we need a little more steam. And I feel like that's exactly how we feel as the reader reading the Finley Donovan series. And I just love that she does that. Um, I laughed out loud when she was on the phone with her agent because she was in um, like a taxi and the taxi driver was also giving advice on the book. <laughs> Okay. Sorry, someone pulled up just beside me in the Wendy's parking lot because I just went through and I got something. I figured I don't really have a gimmick for this vlog. Sometimes I will like read every book in a different location and there's something fun to follow. I thought in this one, I would try something different. Every time I order like food or drink, I will get something different than I normally do. So I saw on TikTok these French toast sticks from Wendy's and I am never in the city this early in the morning, but today I had an appointment, so I was. And I thought I would try them. Americans get so many more like unique things, I feel like, with fast food. Anytime I see an ad on TikTok or somebody trying something, it's an American and it's not available in Canada. So when I saw these French toast sticks, I got worried we wouldn't have it, but we did. You know these frozen ones where it's a slice of bread and then you can put it in the toaster and then tear off each piece and this looks exactly like that and I feel like it's gonna taste the same. AKA incredible. Oh my God. That is genuinely better than I expected it to taste. I'm also on my period, just so you know. And I just feel like this was very needed today. Five out of five. I love French toast. I'm gonna go home and read now. It has been a long day. I'm just getting around to finishing this now right before bed. And it's going fine. Oh my God, I'm so annoyed. I filmed two videos back to back today and I literally got a pimple in between filming. I was editing the first video and then I went to edit the second video and suddenly I had a pimple on the tip of my nose. Anyway, I'm not one who loves law enforcement stuff. Like I don't really want to read a book that revolves around police and like this police academy. It's not that interesting, but they did integrate like a contest into it. So Finley and Vero are participating, they're learning different things and there's gonna be like a competition at the end of their time there. What I'll say about this series is if you haven't started or you haven't like read on in the series is it is completely a suspend your disbelief kind of book. Like I've seen in the Goodreads chat for this, the live shows the day after tomorrow and people are saying that it's a lot like fluffier and lighter than they think it's gonna be. And that's definitely something that I have found when I originally read the first book and saw a bunch of people reading it right after me is it's not really the type of mystery thriller that is typically in my wheelhouse. Why did I almost say arsenal? So it does continue to be like a completely ridiculous over the top nonsensical situation. Um, all of the people who are invited into the police academy are just like random people off the street and like everybody Finley has ever met is basically there. But the reason they're doing this, it's under the guise of her wanting like insight into policing for her next book. And everyone at the police academy, because she's dating a cop, um, knows that like the cop is kind of based off of Nick, the police officer in here. There is a love triangle throughout the series. And it's always fun to see people's different opinions on it. And I don't even remember who I was rooting for in the original book or the sequel. I feel like I like the romantic elements of a cozy mystery. And if it didn't have that, I probably wouldn't like it as much. But I don't know that I'm invested in any one relationship, but I would need to go back and look at my review to see. But I know a lot of other people are mad about the way that the relationships have gone, even though everything is still really open. Like anything could happen from here. So she's invited to participate, but what they're really doing is they think that one of the police officers is involved in something like related to the other books in the series and they want to catch him in the act. But like, it's just pretty ridiculous and far-fetched that this would even be happening. All these people would be invited and this is their idea of like the police to like get community support is to just open this up to everyone. Cause like, 
wouldn't this be just an opportunity for criminals to understand like the policing process and how to get away with their crimes and like teaching civilians how to shoot a gun maybe it's just because i'm in canada my perspective is different because we don't no guns i think i'm gonna wrap it up now i'll probably update you as i'm like going into the live show though because i have a lot on my plate i'm juggling a lot right now so i don't know if i'll feel like filming before then anyway see you in a second it is live show day i'm so excited um my final thoughts on this there's gonna be like an entire probably hour long live show so full spoilers here if you want to watch you want to hear and want to talk about it but i think the gist of my feelings are summed up by a three it goes five four three i am gonna pick up the fourth book but i i think that might be my last one if the series continues past four books which we don't know yet i just remember the first book being so fun and silly and because it was different than what i had read before um it was just a really good time and now it's at the point where some of the same mysteries are here not enough is wrapping up for me the romance hasn't like been super good like i think it's fine i think the love triangle has gone in a certain direction i think that the author is giving us good reasons to support certain romantic relationships but i just don't care enough at this point all of the characters are starting to bug me a little bit even the ones that i loved in the first book it still has that like fun silly ridiculous vibe um that i described as like imagine you're in the sixth season of a show and it has jumped the shark and now everything is so over the top and nonsensical and like you have to suspend your disbelief it's getting like even more like that and that's a really fun element i just don't think that i want to read like much more of it even in the first book you know there's this idea of a mob um and finley getting involved in that and there being like blackmail and there being a bunch of other people all involved in all of this stuff like it's a much bigger conspiracy than she realizes and i think you're either really into mob storylines or you're not and like i want to be but i just think it's it's not doing much with this villain and with everything involved that's making me really invested so i wanted to kind of wrap up i'm more interested in the sidekick vero and her storyline um her backstory her little romance that's going on and something happens like with her love interest in this one that makes me interested to see the fourth book and like get their backstory and see where things are gonna land with them the author has said it's gonna be a road trip story which is what i predicted so i'm really just excited to see the cover eventually and the title um it's probably not gonna be hits the road but i was just trying to think of like another word you know like the gun is in this one knock some dead is in this one killing is in this one they're idioms and i'm trying to think of another one that's like a road trip title though i don't love road trips i want to know how the series is going to conclude and i hope it will be the conclusion and that feels weird to say because like i want the author to have a successful career and write more if she wants and get paid more to write more books in the series but i also really do need a conclusion to all of the things that have been introduced so far every book leaves on such a cliffhanger that i want to pick up the next one hello friends it's a new day i am reading four aunties and a wedding i actually started the first chapter of each one that I have remaining in a live show yesterday. And this one, the first chapter really got me because I like wedding centric stories and I wanna hear about all the wedding planning. And in that first chapter, she was like picking out a wedding dress. Now it's the next day and I'm a third of the way in. Um, the different thing that I tried today is we went, we dropped Liam off for, he does refereeing for hockey. So he's doing three hours of that. And after we dropped him off, Rob and I went out for breakfast and normally I get avocado toast, but today I got a smoothie bowl, just so fun and different. And now we're gonna go pick him up and we have to drive to another city for a hockey game. And a third of the way in, I don't know if I like it yet. Um, it was cute at the beginning and now it just feels like this didn't really need to be a book. Like, I don't really get the point of it. I don't think the romance between these two people is enough that like I care so much to see their relationship in the future. Actually, I'm gonna bring it with me and put it in my bag. Uh, but at this point, like they have hired vendors for her wedding and one of them is questionable, but it's not like they're suspicious of something. They just flat out told them like, we're the mafia. And all the dynamics from there are getting a little bit weird. So I don't know that I'm loving it, but I'm gonna keep reading it. So there's that. My friends, it's now very late. I apologize for how messy this vlog has been so far. I'm gonna try to find the energy. Um, I just didn't feel like updating you at any point. 
because I wasn't liking it and I didn't want to update and just tell you I wasn't liking it with nothing else to really say until I finished it. Um, the only reason I finished it, truly, is because I want to know why so many people don't like it. It was in like people's least favorites of the year. Um, I've heard so many rants about it. Normally when a series continues, like the next book in the series will get a higher rating on Goodreads because more people who are set up to like it end up liking it more than the first one, which like anybody could pick up. But this one from what I recall has a pretty poor Goodreads rating. So I just want to know. I want to go on and I want to read people's reviews. I didn't hate it. Let me clarify. I'm going to give it a three feels a little bit too high. So I think it's a 2.75. With that said, nothing like bothered me that I thought might. With how much people talk about this, I thought maybe it did something offensive or upsetting or like really jumped the shark. But I think it just comes down to it wasn't necessary. This one was so fun. And then this one just recycled the exact same plot. Obviously, there are a lot of other things going on. But everything kind of hinges on um, miscommunication and like accidental, you know, kidnapping, accidental doing drugs. Everything is so over the top and silly, which is fun, but it just wasn't funny. I remember laughing out loud to this and this one, I was just like, okay, like something needs to happen, but nothing really happened. While with the first book, from what I remember, it takes place all in one day at one event, or it's over a weekend. And the pace was really well done within that small period. This one also is like just one day, but I was exhausted. <laughs> it was so trying. And I think it's just sad to read. Like, she wants the best for everybody and wants to figure out this kind of mystery. Um, but they do it in a really stupid way. And also she just spends her entire wedding day ignoring her husband because she's trying to figure out this mystery. And like, that's where the hijinks are. She's running around, she's doing all this stuff. She can't let him know because her family is wild and she wants everyone to accept them. So she doesn't want them to know how much mess her family has really gotten into here. And the aunties are made really fun, but it doesn't make up for how just depressing it is that her new husband throughout the whole book is just like, spend time with me. Like, what are you doing? I miss you. Like, what are these secrets you're keeping from me? Please open up. Now I'm gonna read what everyone else had to say about it and I'll let you know if their feelings are the same as mine or if there is something that upset people. All right, the people's consensus is pretty similar to me. It's that it was boring. The stakes didn't feel high enough. Um, the absurdity got a little too wild and as much as you have to suspend disbelief for the first one, um, you have to suspend disbelief as far as like the actual plot, but not so much how um, like conversations go and like the resolution and conclusion of things. In this one, it's like every single step of the way was just outside of the realm of reality. And also somebody said there was this melancholy tone and I completely agree. I don't think I would continue in the series. I'm not sure if it is continuing, um, but I will pick up this one, the Vera Wong, I think it was. This is about like an older woman solving crimes. And I do think that there is something really charming about Jesse Q. Satanto's writing. And maybe it's just that she shines with the original idea. So maybe the other one will also have a really fun idea at the heart that maybe doesn't need to continue and just insert drama for the sake of drama. Because it's not really a cozy mystery, finding a plot for each individual book, like it, it's, I can't even imagine what would be going on with her and the aunts in future books. Like how can they get in more scenarios where they're accidentally like killing and kidnapping people when it's not actually a thread that's tying any of these events together, I guess. All I have to say is I really better have a win at some point in this video. Hey friends, good morning. Actually, it's afternoon. I am here, me and my giant pimple. I was very confronted with the fact today that I do not own foundation. So she's just a part of our life and this is due. I wanted to match my book today. Did I succeed? I'm at the halfway point. I don't really have any feelings yet. Like it's generally interesting to follow. I still really like Veronica and Stoker. They remain with this fun banter and the people that they encounter along the way while they're looking into this mystery are like hinting that they should be together or assuming they're together or being like, you better 
go get her. And I love that, even though I know that they don't um, for a while, but that's fine. I've had longer waits. I feel like we were seasons and seasons and seasons into Criminal Minds before what I wanted to happen happened in that show. Anyway, I was just sitting here thinking about the title because like mysteries back in the day, back in the day, like Nancy Drew would be like the secret of the blank or the whispering statue or like it would allude to what's actually happening in the story. And this series, let me go grab all the ones I have. I have a lot, don't judge me. I purchased them all heavily discounted. But all of these titles seem so vague to me, like a perilous undertaking, an unexpected peril, a treacherous curse, a murderous relation, a dangerous collaboration. I just feel like they could all be titled what another one is titled. Like I have no doubt this one includes an unexpected peril, but like does this one also not? How do you keep the title straight? As a big fan, do you know which is which or do you have to like look up what order they come in on Goodreads when you go to talk about one. Cause they're also not numbered, but I feel like this is one of those series that you definitely need to read in order. And so the mystery in here is there is a woman who's been murdered. And it's not really about her so much as the person who is being accused of murdering her. She was his mistress and everyone's like, he didn't do it. So now Veronica and Stoker have to look into it and just believe that he didn't do it. There are definitely a lot of clues leading towards other people, um, leading away from this man. His name is Miles, is that on the back? Yeah, Miles Ramforth. And right now they're just meeting up with a lot of people. Um, there's like this gentleman's club or whatever, where they're all like, yeah, I have a mistress, but my heart belongs to my wife. My body belongs to everyone. <laughs> but there's also this women's only club and that's where they're doing a lot of the looking into and meeting up with people and finding things out. I feel like this bookmark works really well for this book. I found it at a farmer's market craft show. I don't really know what it was. It was a mix of things when we were on vacation one time and I just haven't pulled it out in a while. That's where I'm at, nothing else to update. I hate how little I updated you about this while I was reading it. Here's what happened. I updated you at like the halfway point, I think. Um, and then the week just got ridiculous. There was so much hockey. Um, Liam, do you care? Do you care? Probably not. Uh, Liam had his like gold medal game and it was devastating. <laughs> if you're up to date, he's on two teams this year. He got invited to the older team. He plays with them. They have won every single game, every single game the entire season. And his other team, they have lost every single game. So the season has ended for the older team and he just had such a fantastic season. And last night they were going against the hardest competition of the entire like finals and they lost. They literally, they ended in a tie, which hasn't happened all season. Uh, they went to overtime, which we've never gotten to see before. And then they lost like five seconds into overtime and, it, and Liam was on the ice and it was just devastating. And now he has to continue the season with like the other team and still has like a tournament to host. And we have so much going on and yeah. And I finished my book immediately after. And I thought I would just tell you about it today because I've been thinking about it. I had nothing to say. Like I had no reason to update you. I thought it was just a fine mystery for so much of it. But when I tell you, when I got to chapter 20, chapter 20 on, this was a perfect book. Flawless perfection. Like everything I've ever wanted is right here. So I didn't update you because there was nothing to, I, you know, there was nothing really to talk about. And then I couldn't update you because I was enamored. It turned into more from like a mystery to a thriller. And I love when they get into dangerous situations. Like that was very fun. There was seriously dire circumstances. Um, there was a moment where they did drugs. There was a moment that nobody told me about um, between them that I would ha I thought <laughs> I don't even have words for. Um, it was very brief but it was great. We got all of like Veronica's fantastic quips. She is even more herself, which is to say like ridiculous, like all the sexual innuendos, the independence, the way that she holds herself. They're starting to feel a little like caricatures, which I like. 
Stoker I found just a little bit boring or not really there a lot and then again like in that final third we got a similar moment to in the first book when Veronica starts to think a certain way and he starts to talk a certain way to somebody about her but it's all kind of a front and we know that as the reader that he is just trying to get something out of someone by kind of not putting Veronica down but kind of and Veronica after is like mad and he's like I did that for your benefit like I know you can take it and listen we even had a good girl moment that really sent me but I don't know that the intentional slow burn is something that I can love when a third of the book is great. I know at this point I just don't care about the mysteries like we're all here for Veronica and Stoker but you have to also enjoy mystery novels to enjoy this. So I think at the end of the day, I have to give it a four, even though I feel really enthusiastic about it. And I feel like it's gonna take a lot of effort for me to want to get into the next book and the next book and the next book, knowing that they have not just a slow burn throughout the series, but every book itself, there's such a long wait perhaps for it to get like action packed and for the chemistry to be present. Anyway, if there's anyone out there who somehow started the series after me, I would recommend continuing if you enjoyed the first one as much as I did. I know so many people have like finished this series. Well, actually, no, the series isn't done yet, but they have read much further on in the series and they talk so highly of the whole thing. So I know that this, like it's so well known without <laughs> me talking about it. I don't have a book to hold up for you today but here it is this is what i'm reading it's bright and early and i'm gonna go for a nice long walk while i listen to the audiobook because that is my favorite thing to do while i do audiobook stuff i feel this need to be productive so if i'm at home i'm gonna be like trying to work and clean and do stuff at the same time and i don't want to be productive today like i just want to chill and listen to the audiobook but i know i can't do nothing while listening to an audiobook so this is my happy medium. Um, I don't know how far I'm going to get into it, but I do have two whole hours. I just dropped Liam off at school until the library opens and I need to stop there before I go home. So depending on how fast I listen to the audiobook, I'm probably going to put it at like 1.75. I'll probably get a decent way through it on my walk. Our main character's name is Daisy and she has this pie business and people hire her to like get revenge on terrible people. She has like this vetting process. She takes it very seriously. She doesn't want to be like a serial killer. She has this kind of ability to put things into pies so it's like college students love her because her pies make them focus really well even though if they don't really understand like what the pies are doing um so her business is really successful because she will sell pies to the right person and all of her pies always go to the right person the one that they're intended for so like even if she bakes this pie that's meant to kill somebody it's not like it's poison in the pie it's just that the pie is meant to kill that person so if someone else ate that pie it wouldn't necessarily kill them and she goes by a lot of like moral standards <laughs> as much as it doesn't sound like it she has rules um she has certain things that she does and there's a cast of side characters who i don't remember any of them so we'll see if it introduces me i remember there was like a couple love interests our main character is bisexual i can't remember if i was rooting for one person over the other we'll just get into this one and see how it's going <laughs> All right, as expected, everything is getting, everyone is getting introduced the perfect amount. Um, but we also have a ton more characters to learn. Um, she's going to this baking competition and there's obviously a lot of other contestants and we're getting to know each and every one of them. There's just something so addicting about this author's writing. Like, it's just so fun. Um, there's like the perfect setup of all of these people. They fit into all of these different stereotypes. There's the one judge or host of the show who's like very intense and very angry. And there's one who's just the soft, kind one and they play off of each other for the cameras. I think I'm five chapters in. Oh no, seven chapters in. And um, she's already gotten to the competition. She's already meeting everyone. They've already had their first, or they're just getting into their first 
um, challenge. She's already realized one of the judges is somebody who she's supposed to deliver a pie to. Um, while they're doing the show, she's planning on working on some pies because they'll be doing some travel in between like episodes um, and she needs to, you know, also make an income while she's on the show. And now the drama can begin and she can figure out why this man needs a pie. This son is very aggressive. <laughs> so I am, let's see, almost halfway through the book and the synopsis isn't ex like outside of the pie competition or the baking competition the implied mystery is not the mystery as of yet um and in fact there's a whole nother mystery going on but I don't want to give that away I would have like I would have no issue with that if not for telling you that the book is going to be about this uh, judge that dies. And I feel like I can't tell you the two mysteries that are going on. So just know something else has happened. Um, I love the amount of competition is a part of it. I just got a package and I opened it and it looks delicious. <laughs> so I don't know why I thought while I was reading something about baking, I would open this package. Ooh, um, they just made Swiss rolls in one of the competitions, which gave me flashbacks. <laughs> it smells like eggs. <laughs> Is it sweet? Nope. <laughs> Haven't gotten over that one yet. Uh, when I tried to make that cake in the video, it's so funny because so many people were commenting like, why would you pick that if you've never baked before? And like, how was I to know that it would be difficult? I've never baked before. The book very much is the competition. Like we are getting everything that the camera crew is doing, having to talk to the camera. I'm getting comfortable around all these people, all of the eliminations, the maybe sabotage that's going on behind the scenes. And yeah, so I, we don't have a candy store. In our town and I feel like every time I go to visit a small town they have a candy store and we always go as a family it's really fun and the other day again on TikTok I saw a TikTok about like a candy store online and I guess I'd never considered that that was a thing and I was like I'm an adult I can just buy candy online so I did that it was like if you order $70 worth it's free shipping and it got me. So I got it from this place called Candy Fun House. And they even sent me a bonus thing that I didn't order, which is moon pies, which I have never seen. I think I've heard of them. They're banana flavored. Um, so we have to try that. Here's what else I ordered. I just ordered things that I've never tried before. This is Starburst cotton candy. Doesn't that sound incredible? I got Laffy Taffy because I can never find Laffy Taffy around here. I think this is stuff from like international like there was things from the u.s there i think were things from japan and flavors that we don't have here so laffy taffy for my boys and then i got myself circus peanuts because you can't really buy these anywhere but i love them then i found some reese's peanut butter cup things that you can't really find here and then like lunchables <laughs> it was so funny when i ordered this because um i showed rob what i purchased right after and he was like this is the most on your period thing you could possibly do. I was like, yeah. So these are moon pies. I don't understand. Like, is this one thing you're supposed to bite? I don't even know what it is. It's like a cookie and a marshmallow. I don't like it. I'll give that to Liam. I like the texture. I don't like the flavor. And then it's a gummy lunchable that wasn't $70 by the way there's more stuff in the box but those were the most interesting things I love the gummy um hamburgers and hot dogs and stuff that you can buy technically I'm allergic to this fun fact then we need the cheese and the pepperoni cheers oh no delicious truly that was a lot of packaging i also got these lips i thought they were gummy lips but they're wax so um i'm not really sure what to do with these but i'll see you later it's actually really great that there's two mysteries because then even if you figure out who done it for the first mystery there's something else going on that there can be a reveal for i do have my theories 
I'm I think I have an hour left of the audiobook and it's like a seven and a bit hour audiobook so I feel like we're we're close to finding out who the main culprit is and there's a bunch of people in the competition and then obviously all the crew and stuff so it could be anybody and I feel like there's three different types of characters that you create in these types of books so there's the established like main character best friend uh, boyfriend or whatever who you know it's not going to be because it just never is in a cozy mystery. I know this isn't technically a cozy mystery but it still really feels that way based on how silly and gimmicky the competition is itself like being called a good day to pie like a good day to die. Um, it's got all the idioms and the puns and the baking competition like we have the host who starts every segment with a silly little quip it feels very light and silly. So you've got those characters and then you have the characters who are suspects. So the character, the main character considers them um, and creates, you know, a theory in their mind why they're suspicious. And then there are characters who feel like they don't mean anything. So they are just side characters who never really come into the plot. They're just, they're not best friends, but they're friendly. There's nothing to really think about with those characters. And any of these two reveals would be reasonable to have a character you've never considered who did it, or a character who has been given like a couple of reasons maybe why. But I just don't think that Misha Pop is an author who would pull like one out of complete left field. I think it's gonna be one who, there's probably five or six who she has considered and it's gonna be one of them. So. I have two theories, two characters who I am most suspicious of, and I can't wait to find out if I'm right. And if I'm wrong, maybe that character has something to do with like the other side mystery. So I'll come back to you in half an hour and let you know if my theory was correct. Okay, so it wasn't exactly who I thought, which is fun. Um, but the person, the main culprit totally made sense. Um, it was an interesting reveal. There were other moving pieces, which was fun. Uh, I'm fine having spent like the $15 <laughs> Libro FM credit on this, but I am giving it a four and I would like purchase it when it comes out in paperback or when I find it at a used bookstore for like 10 bucks. But as a very consumeristic person, I do feel sad that I don't have the copy to hold up for you, um, but it doesn't matter. And I feel like that is a good thing for me to encourage is that you don't need to own a lot of books or have a lot of books to like have a booktube channel. Um, I don't want to say anything about book prices because like I know that they're there for a reason. I feel like smaller publishers they need to be more expensive. There's probably less that they print. Um, they can't justify paperbacks because like they don't make as much money off of them etc etc. So I don't want to say anything like offensive obviously. Um, so what I'll say is like none of the books in this video I would have paid $38 for a brand new hardcover of. So it's not just that book specifically. Part of me wants to have a conversation about like publishers knowing their market because that's just like wild to pay for a cozy mystery. But just because it was a lighter read or a faster read doesn't necessarily mean like the quality is poor and shouldn't have high value. But I think if you enjoyed the first book in the series, you will enjoy the second. I don't see why not. I think all of the conversations and the little bit of like kind of political influence that the author feels strongly about and wants to put in her books is strong and intentional and she has lots of good messages to share and the competition is so much of the book that it was a good time. I don't know that I would continue in this series just because I just don't read a lot of series anyway. Like there's nothing against it at all. Um, definitely lacked romance. I think when there is a relationship introduced in this type of book, I expect it to get more as the series goes on, um, but there wasn't really any of it at all. So that's my thoughts on that, and we'll get into the final one probably tomorrow. Here we are again in the vehicle for the last book. I am a little bit pink. <laughs> I just had a doctor's appointment. You know, there's just something about putting on that gown having someone in certain areas of your body that just <laughs> makes you feel uncomfortable. Anyway, halfway through this, if it for you has been a while since you've read A Deadly Inside Scoop, um, don't even worry about recapping yourself because this one does a great job. In fact, I think it over explains what happened last time, but it does spread it out throughout. Like we just, 
again, halfway through, got like a reminder of what previously happened because our main character is talking to somebody who basically Bronwyn left her old job. That's what happened in the first book. And she went to do this ice cream shop business. Um, and now she, I don't think is considering going back to her old job, but people want her to come back. God, I'm in a weird part of town. Um, I just decided to go get myself a little treat. I feel like what would have been appropriate is ice cream, but I'm just not an ice cream girl. So I went to Booster Juice. I only got a snack size because I am following through with trying something new. They only had the really tall straws, even though I got a snack size. So it looks a little silly, but I wanted to see if they had a smoothie of the month and they do. It was called a berry blaster. I don't know who this man is, but I'm happy for him and his smoothie. So I think I'm not going to like it. Hold on. Cranberry coconut strawberry banana. I don't know how many people always tell me that coconut things aren't flavored like coconut. I will never understand. Like coconut milk tastes like coconut milk. If you put coconut oil in something, it tastes like coconut. So anyway, this intentionally is flavored like coconut. We'll see if I like it. Well, <laughs> the cranberry is more of an aftertaste and I don't love it, but I really normally just get a whole cup of mango and I like don't want any other ingredients. So it's fun being different. I'll finish it because I bought it. I also just realized it's like 3 p.m. and I haven't had coffee yet today. I know everybody has those days. Like when you have an appointment, for some people, if you have a meeting, an appointment, you have something planned, it's like you can't, not only you can't do anything else for the rest of your day leading up to it, but it's like sometimes you can't think about anything else. So I couldn't even think about eating, making coffee. Like I could have finished this entire thing. I literally did nothing this entire morning because I started this last night. Um, and now I'm going to go home. So I wrapped up Game of Cones and I feel like I have the same thoughts as many other books. Um, it was good, like for a cozy mystery, I'm giving it a four star. But if I look at so many other books, like fantasy and thrillers and even romance that I've given a four star, I don't feel like the ones here naturally match up with that. But comparing to other things in the genre, like four stars is right. It is still a genre that I'm interested in that I have a fine time with, but I don't think I'm getting excited about like new releases. And I've never been a series girl. So the fact that I don't have a new favorite is not surprising at all. But I just feel like yet again, it's kind of a bummer of the vlog, even though most things went well. What I think Abby Colette does really well, um, I've read another mystery series from her, the first book and didn't love it, but I would pick up a new one, especially if there was a standalone one. I think standalone light mysteries, I'm going to gravitate towards more than series. What I think she does that works for me the most is she balances letting you predict things with the character, figuring them out at like the same kind of speed. And it might sound like some, such a simple thing to pull off, but it's not. There are so many times when you figure out something as the reader so much sooner than the character and you are just spending chapters waiting for them to come to realizations or the author has spoon fed you way too many clues or on the opposite side of the spectrum, the main character has figured out so many things but isn't letting you in on them yet. And it, it's just like kind of keeping it like, oh, I know what's going on. Or there's a character who knows everything that's going on and they just repetitively through the book go, oh, I can't tell you. Oh, I, I kept that a secret. I promised your mother I would never reveal this to you. And so the main character is just wondering for the entire book, even though there's one character who has all the answers and we're just waiting for 300 pages for that person to give in. But Abby Collette, she gives you enough clues to think about who done it. I didn't guess who done it, so that's fun. She makes certain people look suspicious, and then like two pages after you think that, Bronwyn will go, hmm, all of these clues seem to be leading to this person. And then the big reveal, like there was a whole chapter buildup where like you knew what was going on, but it could have gone in a couple of different directions. So it was fun to find out with her who was the culprit and also Bronwyn feels very strongly about her friendships so she is protecting people she wants to support everyone she feels strongly about this business um unlike the first one which 
if you remember I filmed the first vlog where I read a deadly inside scoop like on a summer vacation trip even though it turned out to not be set in the summer it was like an ice cream shop trying to succeed through the winter uh, this one on the flip side was actually set in the summer so it had really warm sunshiny vibes so yeah at the end of the day I think with more of these books than not I would continue and read more but I'm not excited to do so like immediately like I wouldn't prioritize these over actual shocking thrilling books I think maybe after reading these I'm definitely in the mood for like some darker thrillers and horror but this was fun I'm glad I got to talk through how I feel about cozy mystery sequels maybe it persuaded you if you want to pick up the sequels I'm not sure if this was that valuable or entertaining I'm just here to read and you're here to watch and thank you so much for doing so I will see you very soon with another video bye